And here we are coming to you live once again from the top secret broadcasting bunker. I still don't have enough volume on my microphone. We do this and this and this. Maybe you can hear me now. Good to be with you today. This is Pastor Mike. I am a guy who has a King James Bible. In fact, I've got I've got more than that. You got to see this. My face lit up like this yesterday. Hang on, I'll show you how it lit up. Lit up just like that. Um, what was it yesterday? Yeah, Alicia comes walking up here with a box. She says, "Dad, you got to see this one." do this a little bit more volume there we go dad you got to see this i not only have a, a king james bible i am now the proud owner of a can of king james okay a can of king james right here i am and i'll tell you something you mess with me today i'm going to open it up on you all right um, this is going with one of my, some of my prized possessions. Um, actually, there was two cans in here, and uh, I opened up one of the cans just to see what was in it, and it was milk and honey. So and, oh, I made that part up. Anyway, good to be with you today, and uh, I am going to be using my King James Bible today on a couple of issues uh, that have come up. I've got a bunch of, I've got more stuff today than I have time to deal with, and so just bear with me. My mind is racing 90 miles an hour, uh, and I have been working on the script for uh, the Fourth Kingdom part 28 or something. I don't know. I don't know where I'm at with this thing, I, but um, I'm going to be dealing with soon uh, the issue of powers. And what I decided to do, just something real simple, and anybody can do this. If you'll just spend a little time and you'll think, and that's what I do. I just spend time in the Bible and I think. Um, I decided rather, rather than just kind of, I wonder what powers means. Go look in the Bible. The Bible will tell you what powers are. I've got one of them little eyelashes right there. Irritate me. The Bible will tell you what powers are. You just, you know how you find it? You get your, uh, you get your King James can opener software and you type in power or powers or any variation. Type in the word power and then put an asterisk next to it. That tells the software uh, to look for all versions of the word power and anything that comes after it. And I just, I, what I did yesterday, I just spent all day long looking at 200 some odd verses with the word power in it, taking notes. And all of a sudden now you start getting an idea of what powers are, what, what, what the Bible means when it uses that word. And you can, you can actually see several different things. And I just started putting verses in, in boxes. This box over here deals with this, and this box here deals with this. And um, then I started working on the script this morning, and I am just, I'm stunned and amazed at some things that I saw today. Your jaw, your jaw will just drop completely off of your face. Uh, when you see this thing, and that's just, I'm just now getting into the very first part of powers. And remember, this is all have to do with the fourth kingdom. And I'm just seeing this solid, this solid block of understanding from the King James Bible. I don't know why people who refer to themselves as Bible believing Christians walk away from that book. I don't understand it, but I'm going to show you some things today of what happens when people walk away, when churches walk away, when denominations walk away, when a nation walks away. I am going to be dealing with the uh, D.C. shooting here in a little bit. And uh, I promise you that I will not use words like false flag and, and, um, and what is it, crisis actors. I, I won't talk about that. I wasn't there. And I, so I don't know if they were actors or not. I have no idea. People say, and, and I knew this was going to, let me move my camera a little bit. I knew this was going to happen. Uh, but anyway, let me, uh, let me kind of share with you what's on my heart for today. You know, we study symbols and uh, we look at symbols and symbols just kind of jump out at us and we go, yeah, I know what that is. I know what that is. I know what that is. And if you read the scriptures and you believe the Bible, then God 
opens up for you what the devil wants to be concealed. I remember bringing this up. I can't remember when, though. Uh, I think it was on the uh, one of the Fourth Kingdom videos, uh, dealing with the idea that the devil speaks in symbols. Um, it is a language. If you remember what God promised in Deuteronomy, when um, his people went against his law, he said, there will be a nation whose tongue you won't understand. They're going to be speaking Get this now. This is this is what this is what gets me about the whole tongues movement. Oh, Shambhala Toya Tito. We're speaking in a tongue that no one can understand except angels. There's just something about that that doesn't sound it doesn't sound like God's Holy Spirit working through you. You you have this idea that God speaks God's real language is something nobody can know, nobody can understand it. That is, that is contrary to everything that I know about God and Jesus Christ and the promise of the new covenant is that now the mysteries are revealed. They're not mysteries anymore. Uh, but anyway, this tongue, this, this language that you won't understand, that you can't understand. And, um, and I'm not saying this is it right here, but one of the languages that most people don't understand, no matter where they are in the world, no matter what ethnic heritage they are, no matter what language they speak, it's the language of symbols. You're told, Albert Pike says in Morals and Dogma, you're told that this symbol means this. We lied. We, as an organization, are telling you we lied to you. We did not tell you the real meaning of what this symbol is, like the square and the compass, or the uh, the Masonic handshake, or ver the circle, the point within a circle, where they didn't tell you the truth. They lied to you, and then they told you they lied to you. And why people still follow that organization, I don't understand that. We lied to you, deal with it. You want to be part of us? You have to accept the fact that we're liars. And even when you get like into 32nd degree, 33rd degree, you still don't Unless you're being influenced by a spiritual entity, you'll never understand that. Or, unless you read the Bible. I have dealt with before the Seventh-day Adventist movement. Um, for years, I've, I've had people from that group contact me. I have always been nice. I've always started out nice. Um, the Seventh-day Adventist people like Pastor Mike, or used to, uh, because a lot of them are really into prophecy. And so they watch my videos and, oh, wow, this is prophecy. But, you know, Pastor, we, we know you know a whole lot, but how come you, how come you, uh, how come you got the mark of the beast on you? And, and I said, now, what is that mark of the beast? Oh, the Bible clearly says the mark of the beast is going to church on Sunday. And I'll say, okay, quote that for me. Qu quote, just quote the verse. Well, you, you know, you don't understand that, you know, the mark is this and that, and, and, and you have the mark of the beast on you because you go to church on Sunday. No, it's not in the scriptures. That's not there. You were told that by Ellen, uh, but it's not there. Um, and so, and I try to be nice. I try to be nice. And I just ask the question, if you can show me in the scriptures, you show me in the law, because it's the law that condemns us or justifies us. If you can show me in the law where we are prohibited from publicly worshiping, worshiping God on any other day except Saturn's day, or you can show me the law where I'm only allowed to worship God on the seventh day. If you can show me that. Well, and, and I had someone say, well, you know, the, the, the remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The way to keep it holy is, and I said, no, 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 no. Now you've stepped outside of scripture. Now you've walked outside of the boundary of the law. Now you've added to the law by saying the way to keep the Sabbath day holy is to go to church on Saturday. No, that's in fact, that's not even what the law says. The law says rest from servile labor. Do no servile work on that day. That's what the law says. And so but it does not say that I am required by God's law, by the fourth commandment, to go to church or to a church meeting and publicly worship only on this day. It does not say that. Uh, so anyway, and then here a while back, I dealt with, uh, thanks to Vern from PA, Bible Truth Radio fan, um, sent me, he used to be in the Seventh-day Adventist movement. He said, Mike, 
here's what I know. Here's some quotes now from Ellen White. And she had this idea. She goes to heaven. Ellen White went to heaven like Paul did, like John. Okay? Ellen did. Ellen goes to heaven, and she sees the Ten Commandments there, and Jesus glorifying the, the Ten Commandments, and, the, and, and here's what she said. She said she saw the, um, the first, uh, like the first four commandments shining brighter than the other six commandments. The first four commandments deal with God. She said, I saw them shining brighter than the other six that's not in the Bible. And then she said, I saw the fourth commandment shining brighter than all the rest of them. That's not in the scripture. And then she said that Jesus told her that the fourth commandment was the only one that Christ did not nailed to the cross when he nailed the handwriting of ordinances that was against us the fourth commandment is the only one that he didn't hang on the cross now here we go right here now what we're dealing see here's what here's what happens if you are a seventh day adventist and you're listening to me i want you to i want you to i want you to reason with me here i want i want to be able to reason with you you say that you believe every word in the scriptures that's what you say the last of those words in Revelation 22 is we don't add words. We don't add doctrines. We don't add to the words of the book. There, there's nothing after this. But you've accepted as doctrinal truth. See, all scripture is given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine. You've accepted the scriptures plus the doctrine of Ellen White and her idea is that Christ died and he nailed the commandments to the cross except the fourth one. And so what you believe in, what you say you believe in is a mixture of grace plus works. That's a lie. You can't do that. You can't add an obedience to one law as a condition of salvation by grace. You can't do it. You're saying exactly what the Mormon church says. Mormon church says, after all you can do, then the grace of God applies. But only after all you can do. Seventh-day Adventist doctrine, the same thing. After you start keeping the fourth commandment, then we'll know that you don't have the mark of the beast on you. Then you can have grace of God if you obey the fourth law. And I would tell you, and Paul said it in Galatians. Uh, let's see here. I probably won't be able to find it very quickly. But Paul said in Galatians, he said, if you're gonna if you're gonna keep circumcision, you're required then to keep the entire rest of the law. If you're gonna do one, you have to do all of it. And people don't understand it. Hebrew Roots people, the uh, Seventh-day Adventist people, the, anybody else who adds works to grace, they don't comprehend the fact that if you're gonna go back into the Old Testament law and dig out one law and say, you have to do this one, or you have to, uh, you have to keep Passover, or you have to keep uh, tabernacles, or you have to keep feast dates, or you have to keep Sabbath, or you have to do this. Once you go back into the law and require any law out of there as a 